to this point in our Vicious Engine material tutorials, we've been talking about some pretty basic things, you know, scrolling, texture coordinates, uh, applying sphere maps, uh, layering materials, and now it's time to get a little bit more advanced. So we're going to talk about frame buffer effects. And what I mean by frame buffer is just taking this, uh, this frame that's being drawn and using that as part of our material. And so what we're going to do, first of all, is just set up a shader that's kind of similar to our chrome or our ebony reflection shader, but where it's actually reflecting the real environment instead of a static uh, sphere map. So the first thing that we're going to do is come in here to the map page and come down here to where it says textures. And I'm going to hit edit and you can see all the textures that are currently loaded. Uh, this S1 metal and this E2 rust metal, those two textures are currently applied to my render cube here. Um, so I'm going to create a new texture. And instead of creating a texture map, this time I'm going to create a frame buffer texture. And so that tells the editor to use the current frame as the texture. And so I'm just going to call this frame buffer clear. And I'm naming it clear because we're clearing the alpha channel uh, in between each frame. Now in order to set this up I also need a render target and that tells the editor to take the current frame buffer or the current screen that I'm looking at and put it into a texture so that I can apply the texture to my model. So I'm going to create a new render target and we're going to call this render target RT underscore 256 underscore no Z and I'll explain this name in here in just a second. We're going to set our render target to color and alpha and we're going to set it to clamp XY because we only want it to show the current frame. We don't want it to, to uh, tile at the edges. Um, we're going to leave it to bilinear filtering and we're going to set our render target to 256 by 256. So regardless of what resolution your current screen size is, it's going to put it into a 256 by 256 texture. And the reason that we gave it the name no Z is because we're not actually writing to a depth buffer in this render target. Okay, so we've got our frame buffer set up with a render target. So we're ready to take the current frame and use that as a texture. Alright, so let's go back to our uh, render cube material. So I'll come in here to uh, materials and hit edit. And the material that I have currently assigned to my render cube is E2 Rust Metal. Or, I'm sorry, no, it's... So actually the material that we have applied to our render cube is Material Demo. Um, so you can see here I've got my Rust Metal layered on top of uh, my Chrome Sphere Map. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and delete our Rust Metal layer. So we'll go back to just the Chrome Sphere Map. And instead of this uh, static Sphere Map, I'm going to drop this down and pick our frame buffer clear, uh, frame buffer texture that we just set up. And you'll notice when I apply that, now what's happening to my render cube is that it's actually taking the current frame buffer and reflecting it onto the cube. Um, the frame buffer isn't really set up to be a sphere map um, in terms of properly being formed in a in a sphere shape and that kind of thing. But it's okay because people don't really perceive reflections as being correct or not. They just perceive them as being cor uh, reflections. And so when I look at my cube, the nice thing about using the frame buffer is that it really looks like it's reflecting the environment that, it, it's, that it's in. And if I have a character in my game that's walking around, that character will also show up in my reflections. So it's a little bit more, you know, interesting and 
integrated reflection than a static sphere map would be. Now if we want to take it one step further, we can also add back in our multipass material. So I'll pull this down and add my rust metal texture again. And the rust metal really masks it out, but you can still see that the reflection is there. So just like I was using my, uh, my chrome sphere map, now I'm using the actual environment for a reflection and masking it out with the, uh, uh, with the rusty metal texture. So I'll go ahead and remove that again and just move around my cube map a little bit so you can see these reflections. On the top you can see uh, the reflections from the ceiling and you can see the reflections from the floor. So it's a lot more realistic looking reflection than the static one that we had before. So in the next couple of tutorials we're t we'll talk about some other ways of using the frame buffer uh, to create some really neat looking effects.